Welcome to Connect, the weekly podcast for the California MBA, featuring one-on-one -on -one interviews with movers and shakers in the mortgage industry. I'm Susan Malazzo, CEO of the California MBA, and very happy that you could join us today. Before I welcome today's guest, I'd like to thank our 2024 President's Council sponsors. And these are a handful of companies that provide a tremendous amount of financial support for the California MBA, in large part so that we can continue to be the strong voice uh, for the real estate finance industry in California before our state legislature and our regulators. So please help me thank this year's President's Council sponsors. And those companies include Amerihome, CMG Financial, Consolidated Analytics, Funding Shield, Guild Mortgage, and Western Alliance Bank. Thank you all so much for your support this year. We truly appreciate it. And with that, I'd like to welcome today's guest, uh, Tony Kaufman with Gantry. Tony, welcome. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> appreciate you having me. I'm happy that you could uh, join us. I know we've met at Western States Crep, but uh, great to have you on the podcast. Uh, I know this year, congratulations, you've been promoted to principal at Gantry. Uh, what does that new role mean to you? Well, it, it means you know quite a quite a lot. Um, you know, we we I think pride ourselves as a company on uh, our capacity to promote you know from within. And uh, starting as an associate six years ago, um, you know, getting my start in in uh, commercial mortgage banking and uh, rising through the ranks, um, you know, it's just a blessing, and I'm excited to be a part of our you know, our brand and, uh, it, you know, really excited to be a part of this industry. Incredible company, been around for a long time. Congratulations to you. That's, uh, that's really a, a great, that's really great news. Um, tell us how you got into the mortgage industry. Yeah, it's actually, uh, you know, kind of an interesting story. When I graduated, I studied economics in, in college and I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I worked in wealth management for like a brief period was not a fit for me. I was always very interested in commercial real estate. I had some family members in the industry, but didn't really know what direction to take my interest in. And uh, some of the people I'd spoken to mentioned, hey, you'd be good at brokerage. And, uh, you know, I really didn't even know what that looked like. So uh, I started to do a lot of due diligence trying to figure out, hey, how can I get into this industry? Because I was always really fascinated with geography. I was fascinated, you know, by demographics and uh, kind of more macroeconomic trends uh, as it as they related to real estate. And started interviewing places. I had no experience, right? So that was quite challenging. And um, you know, I was fortunate enough to find myself in an informational interview uh, at Gantry. I knew uh, one of our founders, uh, Mitch Zeman, I knew uh, his daughter. And, um, you know, basically walked in for an informational interview and was very persistent. They, you know, at first did not want to hire me. Um, you know, it, it had kind of progressed since that interview, but a few months later, they they really didn't want to hire me full time because of my lack of experience. But, um, you know, Mitch was willing to take a shot, you know, on me and give me an internship. And, um, you know, very grateful for that opportunity because, you know, after that three month internship, I was able to establish that I at least knew enough to be uh, dangerous. <laughs> and, um, you know, that's kind of how my career started. And it was a lot of, you know, Really, I, I mean, I think I walked in the first day and I really did not have a good concept of the mortgage banking industry whatsoever, right? Um, so a very challenging growth period, but really rewarding growth period. And, um, you know, I was lucky enough to have that opportunity. I also, I think, you know, willed it. And I think that's really important, right? Um, I knew that when I was going to meet with Mitch, I, there was nothing guaranteed. I wasn't even interviewing for a job. Um, so, you know, I was just open at the time to really any opportunities. 
That is such a great story from intern to principal. I love it. Mitch is yeah. uh, Mitch is yeah. a great guy. Mitch is a former board member. So I, I know Mitch well and, and loved working with him. Yeah. And very, you know, he's one of my mentors and um, just a, a fantastic individual and really a, a titan within our industry. Um, so yeah. I, owe, I owe a lot of respect to him. Well, that's it. That's a great story. Good for you. Shows that persistence does pay off. Good for you. Yeah. So we're coming off of 2023, you know, very, very tough market um, uh, for the real estate finance industry. What asset classes do you see faring uh, better than others over the next 12 months? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. I think in conversations with our lenders and just what we're seeing in the market, um, industrial and real in retail, excuse me, uh, are, are seeming to fare better uh, across kind of the board, right? Not only within California, but but really throughout the West Coast and greater U.S., um, than, than certain other asset classes. Self-storage has, has fared very well uh, also um, in, in terms of just, you know, rent maintenance and rent and or rent growth, right? From our vantage point uh, in the multifamily sector, there's been just a ton of new product depending on what market you're in. And there's been a slight softening in rents. And so a lot of these deals that we're modeling, you know, 8% plus, 10% plus, uh, rent growth year over year are just really struggling right now, right? Because that that rent growth isn't really there. Um, and I and and frankly, I think with the cost of living, I, I don't necessarily see that seeing. I don't see that changing in the next twenty four or next twelve months, right? I think we're going to kind of see this plateau, and maybe rents kind of come in uh, even more than they already have, in depending on what market you're in, of course. Um, but but industrial and retail, I mean. Without a doubt, there is still a significant amount of tenant demand, particularly in the retail sector. It's been surprisingly resilient. Um, you know, I think in 2017, 2018, 2019, before COVID, we were kind of wondering what the future of retail would be uh, in light of just kind of the boom of, of e-commerce and online shopping that really, right. I think, kind of festered. And there was the sentiment that, these uh, these retailers would be um, really struggling in the decade ahead in the 2020s, right? Uh, we, we're yeah. just not seeing that. We're seeing a really resilient retail market. We're seeing a lot of leasing velocity. And frankly, you know, I pride myself on being able to finance any asset class in any situation. Um, and in the last year, retail has really dominated what I've done, which historically I've you know done more you know industrial. So, um, and multifamily, right? And so that's been really interesting to see. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of these corporations that are well positioned took out cheap debt during the pandemic, right? Hopefully they issued long-term cheap bonds and they're gonna be resilient for the years ahead. And I think there's a lot of consumer demand still, despite, you know, uh, the fight against inflation and, and trying to bring down consumer spending. We're just seeing it, right? And that's reflective in, in what tenants are willing to pay for new space. So I think yeah. that that's, I think that I still see retail faring relatively well. I think industrial is gonna continue to fare well, depending on what your market you're in, of course. I think there are certain markets, uh, particularly with bigger box, kind of larger distribution or logistics oriented uh, spaces. Uh, where they may be slightly overbuilt or there's too much inventory uh, coming online. So you're seeing inflated vacancy rates. You know, it's it's quite possible that all of that's transitory. Um, but, you know, in California, for example, I don't think we're overbuilt whatsoever, really, in any asset class for that matter. Um, maybe, maybe office, but, um, you know, that's kind of a unique subset at, the, at this current moment. So I think that... Uh, I would, I'm foreseeing industrial and retail to continue to outperform the other asset classes in 2024. That's great invite. Thank you for that. Uh, what, what would you say makes Gantry unique in the industry? Wow, there's a, there's a lot of things, you know. I mean, um, I would say that, first of all, as we detailed kind of going into the call, right, um, my ability to 
uh, kind of cultivate uh, my own, you know, ascension through our industry with a lot of support, with a lot of, uh, with a lot of love, with a lot of, um, with, with, with basically just a clear path, right? I didn't have to wait my turn per se, right? I think that's a really liberating, um, li you know, kind of a liberating, uh, I, sh I should say privilege to have, right? Um, and I don't think that's necessarily something we see across the board with uh, other companies in our industry necessarily, right? You may have to wait your turn. You may have to, um, you know, you're beholden to one, you know, single owner of a company or even in some cases worse, <laughs> the public markets, right? Um, and I think that what we pride ourselves on here and what was really appealing and what made the decision to become a partner really a no-brainer uh, is that, you know, we're entirely partner owned and we're diversified in that ownership structure, right? Uh, we, I believe have over 20 principals at, at this current point now with uh, Mitt and I joining and we kind of operate through a more democratic process and we love growing from within. I mean, several of our, it's not just the Mitt or I, you know, several of our partners started as associates at Gantry, right? We see ourselves as a family. Uh, we also, I think, just looking around the landscape, we have kind of a policy, which I think was really beneficial, not only to uh, people trying to grow at Gantry or grow in our industry that makes us appealing to, to employees, but really to borrowers, that we're, we have an open door policy and we're extremely collaborative, right? So I'm not, guard, you know, if I know that the guy next to me in my office has really pertinent information for a specific deal I'm working on, I'm bringing him in, right? Um, and that's just kind of our mindset where, you know, you go to some other, you know, places in our industry and it's not as collaborative. Uh, right. So I think that, you know, our more like family oriented uh, kind of setup is really beneficial, not only for people trying to grow within Gantry, but uh, for our clients. Um, and I think the fact that we are not beholden to, you know, the public markets or, you know, one single owner really makes uh, for a very, very, um, it, it makes for a clear path to have change within the company and change within the industry, right? We like to think of ourselves as uh, influencers uh, within the industry, and that's due in large part to our ability to be nimble and to have, you know, a, a ownership presence uh, in various different organizations, including the CMBA, uh, as a voice and an advocate. So I think that sets us apart. Definitely sounds like you're putting the borrowers first, which I'm sure is uh, very well appreciated from your clients and your clients yeah. all over the years. So one thing, you know, the industry, have, I've been doing this for a long time now, one thing the industry has always been focusing on and trying to increase is diversity in the real estate um, finance industry. How is Gantry attracting young or diverse mortgage professionals to this industry? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, I think, I think again, it's, it's a company culture thing. We have just been very successful at, I think, providing a welcoming, supportive, and uh, encouraging environment to anyone that comes on board. Um, and, you know, I think that that mindset and that attitude has really translated to attracting people from all different walks of life, from all different, you know, backgrounds of experience, uh, not just on our production side, right, but on our servicing uh, portfolio side, right? We service over $18 billion of loans. That takes a staff to uh, maintain, and we want to provide excellent customer service. So really across the board, right, we've we've been really successful and i think attracting people that hey maybe they didn't uh you know uh do three college internships in real estate maybe they were in you know accounting and they said they wanted to come over or maybe they were uh you know in in the liberal arts whatever right i mean you can find your path in this industry um but you know we've i think it's it's traditionally been a, a male dominated industry i think there's no secret about that we've we we you know we have several uh, you know, female associates on the production side, and and we you know look to grow. Uh, we we you know we're looking to grow that. By by no means do we have um, you know do we have any like mandate. We just are looking for qualified people, no matter what their background is, no matter what their you know experiences is. If if they can bring something to the table, 
uh, we're open, right? And we're not looking for a specific type of person, which I think uh, really distinguishes us. Um, you know, I think I think any company today will would say that they're focused on diversity, but I think we really uh, we really adopt that practice um, right. by by just virtue of our hiring. So. That's yeah, that's great. A lot of companies need to stay stay focused on that and continue to bring you know more diversity. It just makes the company more rich and the offerings that they have for for their client base. You know, you'd spoken a, a few minutes ago about uh, our mutual friend Mitch Zimon and uh, the role he was a mentor to you. Can you speak to kind of the role that mentors have played in your career so far as to getting to where you're at now? Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. mentors are critical in this field, right? Uh, I think there are a few different core, yeah, you know, for anyone starting out in this industry, um, there are a few core uh, things that I think you need to have. You need to be in a very supportive environment. And part of that is having good mentors, uh, people that are selfless and they're uh, with their time, right? Um, people that are looking out for your best interest. Um, and I really do think back to the question about like kind of what sets Gantry apart. That's something we really pride ourselves in. And I'm, I think I'm a, you know, I'm an example of that. Um, had I not had that influence from Mitch and from various other principals and even associates in our office really across the board, I don't think I would have ascended uh, in my career. Um, and I think that's really critical. I think part of that is also being in an office setting. Um, you know, we're very big at, at Gantry on everyone's in the office. Uh, we think it's extremely, uh, yeah, we think it's extremely important for career development. Um, I think more industries are starting to see that now as we kind of exit the pandemic, uh, especially for younger individuals. Um, and so had I not had that mentorship experience, um, I, I don't think I would have, uh, I don't think I would have been able to, um, you know, be where I'm at now. Right. And I think that without mentors and without that kind of hands-on learning, it's really, there's no textbook for our industry, right? It's really reps and it's really getting an understanding of how to hone your own craft. And you only do that through modeling others' behavior, right? I mean, you are a unique individual, you will bring your own attributes to the table, personality traits, what have you, right? But there's a okay. certain way to do the business right. And there's a certain way to do the business wrong. You know, at Gantry, we take the approach that we're a financial advisor to our clients, right? We're not brokers. Um, now, that's just our philosophy. And the way that that manifests itself in practice is that, you know, I want to be, you know, going to my clients, you know, quarterly financial meetings and talking about, you know, deals, you know, three months out, right? I'm not, I'm not waiting for an investment sales broker to send me a, a package and for me to, um, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd have no ownership over the deal. Or I'm not just working on it for a fee. No, I'm working on it to build a relationship, to be accretive to someone's uh, business, right? And that mindset, right? That was something that was passed down to me. And I think that that really distinguishes Gantry within our industry because we have kind of that mindset and it's across the board, right? Uh, so had yeah. I not been mentored by Mitch or by the other people in my office to think first, you know, about the client, but not only about the client's deal in front of you, but about the client's port entire portfolio, how they want to grow, how we can add value. Um, you know, I think it's it, it would it would not have helped me get to where I'm at now because, you know, there's a lot of uh, people in our industry that, you know, they, they, they want to be helpful. They want to be accretive to a borrower's uh, business in any particular way. But uh, I think it takes a more responsible and more, uh, it takes even more integrity to, to know uh, when and, and, and when and how you can add value, right? Um, to be, to be not just there for one deal, but to be there to, to take that client and take our industry to the next chapter, right? To the next level. So, uh, you know, I learned yeah. that from Mitch. I learned that from all the principles at Gantry. Uh, it's just kind of our culture here. And um, I pride myself on that now in my career. 
I love it. And, uh, you know, I, I love the fact that this industry, uh, you know, people that have experience are so willing to share it with newer entrants into the market, right? I think that that's, uh, it does, you know, just help, you know, really build up and, uh, you know, make the make the real estate finance industry so the great industry that it is. So, um, Tony, thank you so much for being on Connect. I really appreciate you uh, joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And I uh, hope you have a great year, Susan. Looking forward to seeing you at, at our various conferences. And Western uh, States Craft coming up before I'm, we know it. I know. I'll see you. I'll see you in Las Vegas. And thanks to all of you for joining us today uh, for this episode. To access any of our past episodes, you can follow us on our YouTube channel. We're also available on SoundCloud, Apple Podcast, and Spotify. That's it for this week, and we'll see you next time on Connect.